Welcome! In this video, we'll be going over how to set up an Android application test on the Sauce Labs emulator. The first thing you want to do is go and check that your JDK and Maven plugin are correctly installed. Under Project Structure, you can choose the JDK that you would like to use and check to see if Maven's installed as the build tool for this application. In order to follow along, you'll need to have this set up. If you look, you can add framework support if Maven isn't already set up. Maven is set up. You should see the option in the menu when you right click on the project file. The first thing I'm going to do is commit this to GitHub so that my tests don't show up in red anymore. Once you have your JDK and Maven configured, you'll want to invalidate caches and restart so everything can take effect and the files can be indexed. Once everything is loaded again, make sure you have your Appium server running, as well as an Android emulator that matches the version in your code. Run the basic test first to make sure that everything looks correct. If you look in the POM XML, it should reference the testng XML file for the basic test. Run Maven Clean Test and watch as the test results populate and the tests are run on the screen. It should log in to the products page with the two different usernames and verify that they're there. Once you have two successful tests run on your local environment, you're ready to update this code to run it on a Sauce Labs emulator. The first thing you'll need to do is upload the actual app at apps.saucelabs.com. If you don't have an account, sign up for a free trial. You can see test results here on the automated test results page. You'll want to check your user settings to get your username and access key. You also want to make sure that these global environment variables are set up on your machine with the command echo and sauce username, as well as sauce access key, which is how they're defined in the setup method of your test. To run a test against a mobile app, you have to first upload it to the Sauce Labs dashboard under Live Mobile App and choose the App Upload button. Get the Android APK app project file from where it's stored on your local machine and upload it to the dashboard. Once it's uploaded, you can see which version and when it was uploaded, as well as the name of that APK file, which you'll want to take note of for later when you're specifying which app to run against in your project code. Now you're going to take the test code for your Android app written in Appium and convert it into code that can be used to run against the Sauce Labs emulator. The first thing you'll want to do is create a new Java class for this new test called Mobile Android EMU Test, since we'll be running it on the emulator. You'll also want to create a new XML file in the config directory, named similarly with lowercase letters, Mobile Android Emulator Test.xml. Once you have these two files created, you're going to go into your basic test and copy all the imports first and paste it into your new test class. Next, we'll take all of the code inside the basic test class, copy it and paste it in your Android emulator test as well. Last but not least, we're going to copy what's in basic test XML and paste it into the new mobile Android emulator test XML file, then update the test name so that when you use this XML file, it'll run your mobile Android emulator test. Last but not least, go into the POM XML file and under testng XML file, put in the name of the new XML file so when you run Maven clean test, this test will run. The first thing you'll need to do is change your settings so that you're no longer accessing your local Android emulator and Appium server and instead accessing the Sauce Labs emulator cloud. The first variable we're going to set up is the region variable. Sauce Labs has different servers that you can access. In this case, we'll have an option for the US West or the European one. We're going to set this up in the separate config file so that later on, when you want to change the region for multiple tests, you only have to change it in one place. If you don't have a config file created yet, create it in your test folder. For now, we're going to set it to the US data center. 
Once you have that config class created and imported, we need to update what server we're running against. Since we uploaded your app to Sauce Labs, we no longer need to specify the local file path, but instead can just specify the file name. We'll no longer be using the Appium server variable because we'll no longer be running it on the local machine. For now, we'll declare a URL using the Java URL class and set it up later. Now, you will set up to connect to the Sauce Labs remote emulator, creating a URL that you will use to connect with your Sauce username, Sauce access key, and the name of the data center. The first thing you'll need to do is create variables for your username and access key that pull the environment variables that you had set up for your Sauce username and access key. The next variable that you need to set up is which data center you'll be connecting to. We're going to use an if else statement that will detect if the European data center is specified, and if not, will default to the US West data center. Next, you'll set up a variable called the sauce remote URL, which will allow you to access and run your test against all the devices in the sauce labs cloud. You'll create this URL using the variables that you just created, stringing together the HTTPS, username, access key, and data center, as well as specifying a port. Next, we'll use the Java URL class that we instantiated earlier to declare the URL that you'll be running your tests against using the sauce remote URL variable. Now that you have the basic credentials and URL set up to access Sauce Labs, the last thing you need to do is instantiate a driver using those URL and capabilities. Previously, you had accessed the Appium server on your local machine, which we have now changed to the variable URL. All you need to do is update this in the driver instantiation, and we can move on to updating the capabilities so it will run on Sauce Labs. For each kind of test you create, whether it's mobile or web browser, mobile app, mobile browser, and which framework you use, you need to update the capabilities so that they can communicate the correct information. The Platform Configurator can help you do this. Search for Sauce Labs Platform Configurator in your search engine. The test that we're going to be running is an Appium test, as you know. We'll run it against the Google API emulator as well as use the most recent Appium version and the Android 9.0 operating system. We're doing an app test, so we will select that. You'll need to go back and look at the file name that you have in your test code or that you wrote down from before and enter that in, in order to get the correct configuration. The device orientation and browser name are optional capabilities for this Appium test. However, you do need to specify the platform version and the platform name. The other main change you need to make is to the name of the app that you're testing against. Before we had specified an app on the local file path, and now we're just specifying the name. So in the key value pair, you need to add in the storage file name and concatenate it with the name of the app that you have stored in the variable. Now we will add some simple debugging to your test and run them on Sauce Labs. By using a system out print line, we're going to add in an indicator whether or not our before and after method runs with each one, helping in the debugging process. If the before method runs but not the after one, you know that there's probably a problem with how you set up your capabilities or your configuration. If something happens and both the before and after method hooks do run, you know that there's a problem with quitting your test. If just the before hook runs, then you know that there's something wrong with the actual code in your tests. Now that everything is set up in your POM XML, test ng XML file, and your test code, you can run the command maven clean test in your terminal to start the test suite. You can see here that our before method hook is successfully running. If you go to Sauce Labs dashboard to the test results, you can see the test as it's running. You'll see a play-by-play -play and visual of what's happening in the code, as well as see a list of all the events that occurred during your test once your test has finished running. The Sauce Labs dashboard gives you key insights and makes it easy to understand what commands are running and what's not going right in your test. 
will also give you alerts if you haven't configured things right or set up your capabilities incorrectly to run your tests on Sauce Labs. As you can see, both our after and before method hooks have run. To learn more about debugging and test automation in general, visit training.saucelabs.com and visit the Quick Start course to learn how to run tests on mobile web browsers, do better test reporting, and run tests in parallel.